Uh, here I have a Panasonic G mechanism video. This is an NVF65 hi fi stereo one. Uh, like a lot of these, display is very dim. You can just make out a little bit of the VU meter there. Can't really see much any. There is a clock there just, which is quite common. These power supplies and these tend to have the capacitors fail in them, the electrolytics on the secondary side there, so that's most likely the problem there. Um, oops, turned it off. Um, I haven't checked it mechanically, so I'm going to use one of these dummy cassettes. This is actually a commercial one you could buy. I never got around to fitting. You could actually fit a piece on these for these Panasonics because they're a bit picky. But um, the other trick is to put your finger down down the side of the mechanism here because there's a, a bit of a lever thing off the back which will jam otherwise. I'm load it in and just got to hold that little plastic lever up so that this can actually get right down there. So it's laced up. And press play. It's making a bit of an odd noise but we've got to take up real. Control is going. And that's probably it's just stopped on its own but that's probably because yeah, there's an optical sensor on the supply reel. Ooh, something's making a bit of a clicky noise, so you've got, sometimes you've got to manually turn this since there's no tape in there. Take up reel, I'm just checking, it's got a bit of... I can't stop it easily, so it's got a bit of tension. These are all gear driven, so there's no idler tyres or anything to wear out in these. I think they've got a capstan belt, just one belt that runs pretty much everything from the capstan motor. And obviously a separate motor on the heads. And something's making a bit of a weird noise in this thing. But given the age of it, not surprising. Not sure what that is, it's kind of scraping sound there, but it looks like it's probably safe to put a tape in this thing. Could have been the capstan motor maybe. Tape I've got somewhere. I don't know what's actually on it, but at least if I choose this, it's not the end of the world. Ooh, yeah, something's a bit clicky there, and we're seeing the trouble. Could be the tape, or it could be some muck on the heads. Greasy stuff somewhere on either the tape. Yeah, it's scratched into it a bit there, something not too heavy, but it doesn't look like it's got any grease or anything on it. That's forward a bit past that bit. Something definitely making a bit of a weird noise there. Yeah, the heads are slowing down, which is strange. Ooh, yeah, something not happy there. I don't think I've ever seen the heads slow down in one before. Yeah, it's like there's a lot of friction there. Really that tape probably hasn't been used in a long, long time. I might uh, probably see these tend to lace up, which is an annoying feature of some of these machines. Might fast forward the tape and loosen it up a bit. Yeah, it's not exactly flying along. That's starting to speed up a bit. Something definitely making a bit of an odd noise, which could be the caps and motor bearings or something. That's running more like a normal sort of speed.
This seems all right. I'll just check. And actually, if you're experienced with these things, you can get a bit of a feel for the back tension. So there's an actual arm on this side of the tape and a brake band around the reel. That puts a bit of back tension, pulls the tape back so it's nice and taut around the heads. So if you get too much tension on the tape, it'll kind of slow the heads down or just generally run badly. Seems to be running alright now. But I think I'll give this thing a clean. Probably should check for an actual picture, it'd be a handy thing too. And yeah, give it a clean and definitely something has that you're not sure of the condition of once the, the tape path and the head's cleaning. Could also be a little bit of moisture. Though I haven't really moved it from anywhere cooled anywhere warm. There's a bit of muck on the lower drum. So that could do with the clean. And I'm going to have to go and get a cotton butter. Okay, I haven't actually given it a clean yet, but I'm just running the tape here. I've got a little small TV hooked up there with the old How to Use Your Triton Work Center video on it. That all seems to be working okay. But I'll still give this a clean, and yeah, it's going to need a, a new set of capacitors in the power supply. They may be causing some problems with the motors themselves. It might be that some of what we've seen before was related to them. And now the caps are warmed up a bit, maybe everything's running right. But yeah, we'll just get a cotton bud. And you're going to spin this up a drum around, being careful not to actually touch the video heads while you're doing this. Just to clean all the aluminium surface. And then we'll get a good end. You need a nice tight cotton bud. And we'll very carefully because it's a hi-fi machine, this is like six heads, but it basically looks like four. One of them is a double head, I think, for the long play. And you've got to be very careful with the heads and these, they're easily broken. So they're the little, down where the top of the head, or the spinning bit, comes down to the stationary bit on an angle here. You'll find in a hi-fi four little slots, roughly 180 degrees apart. Although, yeah, the two fairly close together, but 180 degrees the other two. In a normal non-hi-fi video, you'll just have two sets ahead normally, 180 degrees apart, just a little slot in the aluminium you can see there. Just make out a little black piece in there, very fine, with some copper wire on it. We have to very carefully clean those side to side, do not move up and down on them, because you'll snap them off. So very gently with the cotton bud, side to side on the head face. And I'm um, being very careful not to get any cotton bud caught around it. Uh, you can get other sort of better cleaners than cotton buds, but these tend to work fairly well and are easily accessible. Even a lot of the professional ones are really just fancy cotton buds. But I'll now go over the the lower aluminium part and actually spin spin the heads as I do it to keep the the little holes where the heads are out of my way, so I'm not touching them. So I'm just keeping a bit of blank aluminium above where the cotton bud is because I don't want to be accidentally rubbing those and maybe catching cotton bud on them possibly breaking them if it catches on them a bit of muck below the actual tape path there so I'll wipe that off as well and it's always good to, to roll the little plastic bits on these tape guides to make sure they spin freely but making sure we wipe any finger grease off afterwards I've got this little um, half loading arm here. Do the other tape guide. And we've got our back tension arm. Just a little pin sticking up there. We've got another sort of half loading arm here. I forget that was something. I forget why I had the two of them. It's got something to do with this audio and control head, I think. So I'll give the audio control head a clean. And the capstan is amazingly clean in this one. That's actually capstan shaft is under this as part of the motor and the, and the pin roller too is 
exceptionally clean, but the pinch roller you go up and down on it and just roll it round as you do, holding it still with your finger. You can roll it round using the cotton bud until you've gone right round it. And then yeah, just try and grab the edge and wipe wipe it off where you've touched it. Uh, next thing is to remember to let this methylated spirits evaporate a bit before you put a tape in there. Otherwise, yeah, if that head's damp, uh, as soon as the tape goes in and comes up to that head, it'll all wrap around the head. Would have been a top of the line, might help if I put some power on. Top of the line machine back in its day. Yep, and then the head's actually hunting a little bit, so that could be power supply related. The pitch is flickering and carrying on a bit. I can actually hear the speed of the head motor sort of the humming noise changing a bit, so it could be something to do with the power supply. So yeah, we may have to change the capacitors in there. Yeah, now it's settling down. And it's still going up a little bit. Yeah, it seems to be getting better as it as it warms up. But lightly touching the fence front and back. Next, put the riding knife and safety guard behind your saw blade. There are three positions for the clamping bolt. The central position is for most saws, the forward position is for very small saws, the rear position is for very large saws. The idea is to get a gap of about 12 millimeters or half an inch between the back of the saw blade and the leading edge of the riding knife. Here's a very important point. Whenever you're fitting your riding knife, make sure your saw blades are full height. See, at the moment my blade is not at full height. If I raise it, I'll be cutting into the riding knife if I accidentally switch on the power. So, set the riding knife when the blade is actually at full height. Yeah, it's running steady now, so it is quite possible that's power supply related. I mean, given the age of the machine, I mean, it's 30 years old, so could be other capacitors on the main board here are faulty. But we'll have a look at that power supply. I think there's just a couple of screws on top and the couple where the power plug go in from memory. Or is it just one on this? I think that's, yeah, that's definitely part of the power supply, so that's coming on at one end. Usually Panasonic, these red screws indicate things you've got to take out. Nice little connector there, to, to remove. Yeah, someone's done this before by the look of it, which is not surprising, given how common they were for, for failing. And this bottom cover just prizes off. Careful that goes, it may flick. Don't want to hit the front of the video. Don't think I need to remove that plastic cover. Yeah, someone's done the primary and the I can see a replacement capacitor on the primary side. There's a bunch of capacitors under this little heatsink here. Which I think we may have to take out as well. Don't actually get access to anything some sort of SDK type chip under this just a, like a multiple different voltage regulator in the one package which doesn't want to come off of course and I thought the heatsink paste was on the other side looks like it's actually on the side I'm removing unfortunately and that does not want to come loose yeah, it's definitely going to have to come out though Being very careful, try and prise the chip off, but geez, it is attached. There's not that many pins on it, I might just unsolder it. Probably could do with resoldering anyway. And you can do them two pins at a time anyway. 
with one of these, these soldering tools. Yeah, they're a bit on the dry side. It's emptying out, there's a bit of crap coming out of it. But yeah, as soon as I'm soldering those, I can see them sort of break a bit, so they're not in great condition. Quite a few of them haven't come loose by the look of it. Very tight little holes. Not much room around them, so any tiny bit of solder will cling to it. Come on out you come. Just got to be careful of these chips because if you start pulling on them and any of the pins are attached they'll the pins have got a bit of a kink in them and it'll pull them out longer. So there we have it, a little STK5391. But now you can actually get down to these capacitors. And I'll probably get the ESR meter and just see what they're measuring like. But usually best with these just to change everything. In doubt, chuck it out. I should really discharge these. I guess I think one of these can stay charged up to about 30 volts. Just check if there's any voltage on them. Nothing. 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 So that's, oh, that's another one there. Yeah, they're all pretty well discharged. They'll be right. 1.3, it's probably a bit high. 1.2, I'll check the values later, but these are all should all be in the hundreds of microfarad. That one doesn't seem to be seems to be open. Rare they actually go open, but uh, 56, yeah, that's well and truly knackered. That one's actually good by look at 0.15. I can actually yeah, see a bulge in that one. So that's probably pretty dry. That was the 56 one and this this is measure and open. So they are well and truly shot. What do we got? I can only see 1000 mic, 100 mic, can't see 470 I think. Use your best just to do one at a time so you know what you're doing. That should fix it. I still quite like using the hand solder on tool, even though they're a bit of a pain, you've got to clean them out occasionally, but you have to do that with the, the proper desoldering tools anyway. Desoldering stations. Yes, that's 680 mic. I think that was actually the good one. But like I say, it's probably best to. I don't know if I've got any 680s. Oh, don't want the multimeter, I want the SR meter. But given the age of these, 0.2 years, probably within 680, we've got a thousand. Yeah, it's probably still okay that one, but let's see what I've got. Thousand microfarad, I think. How many volts is that? 25? Yeah. 1016s. Ooh, might be lacking 25 volters. So I might have to put that one back in yet. Which I mean, I'm only going to use this machine myself for a couple of tapes I've got here I want to try it on. 
but if it was a job for a customer, you'd just change everything. And that way, keeps them happy because the machine keeps going for years. Yeah, 60. That's a 470, 25. That's got a slight bulge in the top, which is always a sign that they're shot. volt 470s anymore no I seem to be just down a 16 volt that's going to be a pain I might have to salvage a few that was a hundred I definitely got hundreds that's a thousand sixteen so I've got a thousand sixteens but for these other ones I might have to actually salvage them off a circuit board somewhere which I hope is a pain in the bum of salvaging second hand electrodes, but sometimes it's got to be done. But I should have heaps of 100 microfarad 63s because I used to buy them 100 at a time. 100 mic 63 and 4763 were just common failures in televisions, especially all the Chinese televisions. The old CRT ones, they just they spend all day changing the things. As well as all the other parts they blew up in there. That one was actually open circuit. Where did I put those? 163. I've got one that hasn't been used here. 163. These are all the 105 volt ones, but I'm not sure they're that great. The EXR, yeah, the EXR series with the, the high ripple sort of low ESR types for switch mode power supply usage. But to be fair, they're not the greatest themselves. I mean, a lot of these things ran excessively hot. Anyway, the actual VCR, these power supplies ran pretty hot, and if you had them in a hot room, shoved in an entertainment unit, they could get really hot. So that's the 100, I'm not sure what that next one is. That'll be a thousand, I think there were two thousands in these. Yeah, 1016 and 1016, so I might just change those two together. They are marked on the board, the positive and negative. Back in the day, I'd always double check because occasionally, very occasionally, the, the layout on the circuit board, on the screen print on the circuit board was wrong. So always, as you pull them out, just double check that they actually are around the way they say they are because you don't want to put these things in and have them exploding later on because they're in backwards but yeah, it looks like I need to stock up on a few different capacitor types because yeah, you do get through these lower voltage, higher capacitance ones anywhere from 100 mic up to 2200 you tend to use a lot of them in these modern switch mode power supplies and even in audio and stuff but switch mode power supplies burn through electrolytic capacitors like nothing else so look at that 680 back since I haven't got one and it measures alright if I can get it back in there that's the problem when they haven't got long leads on them like the new ones they're very difficult to get down into these boards since they're down in these cages and you've got to be very careful holding capacitors with pliers because if you bend them you're likely to cause them to leak that little cross in the aluminium the top will open up and then they just dry out in five minutes and also with the leads on the bottom you want to be careful you don't damage the rubber seal by spreading them out if you bend them close to the body and stuff that can actually damage the 
the seal around them. Obviously that one's going in the bin, so that's not a big issue. And I'm missing a yeah, 470.25. You know, I used to have heaps of whole circuit balls lying around, but not so much these days, so I'm not sure where I can nick one of them from. TV chassis here is probably yes, it's a 220. I bet it hasn't even got one. Thousand. That'll be the only value it hasn't got. It's that one. Yep, sure enough. You never have the right capacitor on you. Twenty, of course. Yeah. Oh, well, it looks like I have to use a three thirty microfarad for now. Only thing I've got in 25 volt that's close to that. So I'll stick one of those in there and that can always be changed later. It's probably still a damn sight better than the capacitor that was in there. I think that was the one that measured 60 something. So that's well and truly shot. couple of other little ones I think they might have had something to do with the display I can't remember or was it just the big ones probably should check those is that a dry doing on that transistor it almost looks quite dry to me certainly not a great bit of soldering yeah no they're not the greatest I used to do a dry joint somewhere on the diodes here. Yeah, that big diode there. Yeah, you look right in this one. And sometimes on the switch mode transform, I think the joints would look a bit iffy. So I'll just check these few little tiny electrodes, 10, 10 microfarad or somewhere around there. 14 is probably about right for one of them. Is it that one or that one? It is that one. That seems to be open circuit as well. The other one measures alright. Again, they should really be just replaced as part of routine service. But this is only my old thing, so it's both 10 microfarad. And that one seems to be 
Pretty well shot. Oh yeah, I can hear it hissing a bit. It doesn't sting, but yeah, there's definitely some muck on that lead there. So that's leaked its contents out. Yeah, as open as. 10, no, it's a 47, 16. In the rubbish of that. I should have eaten the 47, 63s. I don't know if I've any smaller ones, maybe. But yeah, just, I just used to order 47, 63s as standard. I reckon that'll even fit in this one, even though there's not a lot of room. Maybe that was the one I was thinking of. And just one of these capacitors I know causes dim display. Probably won't hurt to mount that one up a little bit off the board. Or it's maybe not exposed to so much heat. So I have to put our IC back in. Oh, did I check? There's one more there. C21. Better check that as well. Yeah, it's nice and low. That's pretty good for something like 10 microfarad, I think. Yep. Uh, did I check those? I don't think I actually checked these other three either. I think they're normally fine. So good thing I did check it. It must be fairly high. Oh, that's 100 mic 10 volts. So uh, yeah, two hundreds and one 10 microfarad. I think it was negative that way. See muck down the lead again. Yeah, that's open circuit. That was 100, wasn't it? 110 volt. In the rubbish with that. And that's why I say you might as well just blanket change a lot. It's actually quicker to just change them all than to mess around measuring each one. Usually. So these have all been used to test something. This might be getting a bit big for the hole. No, that should be alright. Yeah, I'll just leave that proud of the board a bit so it's not pushing the other one sideways too much. Ideally, I sh that should be a smaller 25 volt or 16 volt just for the physical size, but one good thing about the bigger ones is they usually take a bit longer to cook because they can handle the heat a bit better. Yeah, is it going to be that I should Lean that back that way a bit because it's going to be in the way of my IC. But yeah, if you're ever moving a joint like that, just make sure you solder it properly because you'll make it dry just by moving it. Or potentially. Yeah, can I can't get this IC to line back up with the holes, is going to be the fun bit. Yeah, the capacitor is in the way a bit. Oh, I've got it, I think. A miracle if I got it in that easy, it's in. Wow. It's pretty rare that happens. So I'll put the screws in first before we solder it. Make sure everything's held together properly. And in position. Ah, now the capacitor's in the way of that a bit. tight because you don't want the chip overheating yeah so they're right up against that heat sink so again that's another reason they would have got hot and dried out okay so I'll solder the chip back in but I'd recommend resoldering these chips anyway 
because they're mechanically mounted onto the case they tend to get a bit of movement against the circuit board even just from the heating and cooling cycle which does tend to make the solder fail eventually so if I was, whenever I repair one of these type of power supplies I usually solder that chip even the connector is always worth checking especially the end connections looks like someone's already done the ends on this and just give it a good visual inspection these joints here don't look 100% so I'll just resolder those now I should really remove this plastic cover and check the primary side as well but that all looks pretty good should probably really check the capacitor in this as well there's one tucked down there, I forget what value that is, I think it's a high voltage one see whatever that is, let's just check there's no voltage on that and of course always check the main filter capacitor in the switch mode because that could potentially be a lethal amount of voltage in that, the, obviously the biggest cap in there now if the switch mode is running alright it should discharge but always treat them as dangerous and discharge them with a hundred ohm resistor or something if they are charged because you don't want to get across anything you touch in here could be at 300 odd volts and it could have enough current to kill you so you definitely don't mess with those things god that's actually measuring open I can't be right though. I'm pretty sure the power supply won't start if they're open maybe that's not maybe that was a different model I think one of these had an electro which if it failed, I think it was like a 1 mic 160 volt or something that would stop the video firing up it might have been those horrible J1 NVJ1s or something, they had a lot of trouble with the power supplies and everything else in them I think for that matter but they're a bit of a menace those things okay, oh, this is, oh it is a 1 mic 400 volt I'm I could have sworn that when they went the video wouldn't start up at all. Seems to be dead open. Hmm. Yeah, not sure about that. Are there any other electrodes? There's one little tiny one over there as well. Actually I can see the solder joints. One good thing about when someone's done it before you, you can see where they've been. 2.9 no idea what it is value wise I'm pretty sure they were a 4.7 or something low value but yeah it's been a while since I've done one it's a 47 47.25 something might be getting a little high Yeah, that should be around 1.2, it's not that far off a bit maybe, so I might change that as well. I'm going to have to go and find my high voltage caps here. in the other shed I think. So let's take this 47 out and change it. Someone's put a very odd little, not even a high voltage one, little Jamaica on. 47.25. Oh, anyway, I've only got 65s, I think. Yep, always check your capacitors before you put them in as well, even if you get them out of the right drawer, because occasionally you get the wrong one in the wrong drawer. So it's kind of a case of checking everything as you go. Check the polarity as you pull them out just to make sure it matches the markings on the board. And yeah, check everything for, before you put it in just to make sure it is the right thing and it's the right way around. And you 
you should have no problems. I'll just go get this other capacitor. Okay, to get this one in, by the look of it, I'm going to have to, the last one microphone, I'm going to have to pull this label up a bit. I think I've done the right side of it. Yeah, then you slide it, slide it sideways to get that metal plate off. Now we can actually see what we're doing and actually get it in without trying to do it on a silly angle. front to you. Someone's resoldered the back pins on that chip, I think, but I'll do the front ones on the little STR or whatever it is. Regulator, switch mode regulator. The rest of it looks, oh, actually the end pin on that transformer is definitely starting to go. Switch mode transformers being a heavy item and running at a high frequency, they tend to slowly vibrate their connection actually that's a diode i'm wrong about that that's a diode on the secondary that's not an end pin on the transformer so either way it needed resoldering i had a feeling these diodes occasionally i'll do the other one as well i think because they've run quite hot i think yeah the rest of it looks pretty good get our plate back on Cover back on the primary side. Not really sure why they have that even, but just a, maybe it's part of the double insulation or something. Between the metal work and the, the power supply, that capacitor is rubbish. Yeah, cover. Home and that should be a go, hopefully. Now this little bit's falling off now, that'll be right. Plug it back in. Let's open that up. Ship this slot back in. Ah, uh, that bloody capacitor. Yeah, this big fella here is actually in the way of the... Oh, that's a bugger. So, that's going to be a bit of a pain. Post, yeah, mounting post comes right up. Actually, this other capacitor is in the way too. Anyway, I had small ones in stock for a reason. But it's been a long time since I've done one of these. I don't think I've got any small... Yeah, I did have some small ones. I used them in that damn... Digital compact cassette player. Maybe that's why I had those in stock. I've got some smaller 220 microfarad. I might have to use one of them in there. So even when you think you can get away with a bigger one, it's not always the case. And of course, back when I was fixing these all the time, I could remember that, but... So I'll get rid of that one. Let's see if I can get a 220 mic. It shouldn't worry it too much having a bigger capacitor in there in value-wise. I'll push it right down into the board, which it now fits between the others. But normally you'd have every value and at least some lower voltage smaller ones in stock when you do it on a day-to-day -day basis because just you spend half the day replacing electrolytics. So maybe can I push that down a bit lower? It's a bit of a disceramic there in the way. 
couple small are they are they 125s oh, now you tell me they're in the wrong drawer so huh could have used one of them anyway gotta find something how to do something with this 47 do that with it. Uh, not really. Yeah, they certainly made some of these things very tight. Which is a pain because you... It's why they run so hot as well. Because everything's jammed in a small place. So 47, but smaller. Or oh, it's just not going to fit down there, I don't think. Not in a million years. Let's remove that disc ceramic and put it on the back of the board, which could be done. Check that TV chassis again. Normally you wouldn't use a second hand electro because they may be half worn out and they don't cost anything the new ones but in this case I'm gonna have to I should really check the ESR first, but I think that one should be alright. Out of the low signal section in an old Samsung P54 chassis, so... Can't remember ever having to replace one there in the power supply, yes, but not... Not in the IF or audio or whatever that was in. fits in there nicely, it's a little close to the screw maybe, but should be well out of the way. When it comes to putting these back you can see which side's got sort of a bit of smoky residue, dust, whatever it is, and which side had the plastic against it, so it makes it easy to know how to put that back in. Get all this crap out of the way. Back on, how did that go? The other way, wasn't it? No, maybe not. Oh, yeah, that fits in over there. That's got a weird bit there. Why has it got that? Go. Now that's the bit that goes there, maybe. Oh yeah, that yeah that went under there. I don't know why they've got these stupid earth straps, but they do. That's it. Bit of a Panasonic quirk, really. Must have had some sort of problem with noise there somewhere.
so I'm going to fiddle around to do one of these. Plug the cooler back in. Seven o'clock at least. So yeah, now we've got much more visible display if you can see it there. Not the best with all the lights on here, but still not. Probably back to its full brightness. But given how many years it's probably been sitting there powered up. That's not too bad. Okay, I'm starting this up again from cold. Uh, display is reasonable to look at. I don't think it's quite as bright as they're meant to be, but it's close enough. I'll put the tape back in and see how it runs with new capacitors. Yeah, that's looking good. Yeah, no problems with the head hunting or anything like that. So all that sort of weird noises from motors and head speed hunting must have been must have been due to the actual capacitors in the power supply. And given how bad some of them were, it's not surprising they were obviously not providing enough voltage or something to the motors. But this is as steady as now, so. And yeah, display is looking pretty good. I wouldn't be surprised knowing these things if the actual lens plastic on the front of the machine needs cleaning. It's common you take the front off and clean often the lens, the display itself, fluorescent display, as well as the the plastic on the front here will actually have a bit of could be cigarette smoke or a thin layer of fine dust on there. Some sort of goes a bit smoky, so I might actually reject the tape. I'll take that off and have a quick look because I know plenty of times I had to clean those. So, given the age of the machine, it's bound to be a bit dirty if. and always worth a quick clean. I think we've got to take. No, this just is two screws, I think, and the rest is clips. Two the clips on the end and the clips underneath. I think they've got a ribbon cable to hold this fold down front panel. Oops, just turn the TV off. And another clip there. Yeah, that's the one. Huh. Oh, this one plugs in so the this flip down front controls on this model just plugs into a little edge connector there. But yeah, that's, that's a bit dirty in there. smoky looking here, yeah, the display is not too bad, but it's not mint condition there. You can probably see that's not really as shiny as it should be. And probably a good chance to get a little paintbrush in here and wipe out some of the dust. But this machine is not too bad for its age. I've seen a lot worse than that, especially out of a smoker's house. So I'll just do a bit of paper towel and some metho. Give the old fluoro display a clean, and yeah, there's a bit of black muck there. And it'll probably be even blacker after doing this. This is definitely dirty. Oh, yeah, very black now. So that could be a bit of wood heater smoke or anything. Even the cleanest houses often had a surprising amount of build up inside videos and especially colour TVs which the heat and the static would attract a lot of dust. It's near perfect but a little bit still on there. That should be pretty good. So watch these little sliders have moved. Uh, now where's my paintbrush? That will do. Clean out the dust from the inside of that. There's a bit around the video door here. Bit of dust doesn't really worry a VCR but it does look horrible so I'll get rid of it for that reason if nothing else. This front should just clip back on I think and just make sure all these little clips like oh wait up I didn't didn't do the level controls. 
check those for alignment. And of course, as soon as you move the thing, they slide. And you juggle about 50 of these, so where are the pots? Use a way to slide these little slide pots here, dip back down to minimum. And the same with the controls on the front. And you actually put your finger on them and hold them in place. That's better. Just go straight on then. And just check those feel like they're doing what they should. If they're not, they'll be super loose or they'll slide to one end and something will jam. They won't go the full range. The outside of this is pretty dirty too for that matter, so... Yeah, it's in quite good condition, this machine. Again, I've seen a lot worse. Even when they were reasonably new still. Yeah, someone's actually kept this quite clean. A lot of people were loath to clean their VCRs. I think put anything liquid near them and they just, just let them get dirty. Okay. Oh yeah, it's definitely, it's not the brightest display ever, but that is showing up brighter than it was before. So yeah, I think they, when they originally came out, they were a bit better than this one, but that's good enough. You could just about make that out across the room okay, I think. off. File or some sandpaper, remove the table and remove a little bit of the epoxy coating off the walls of the slot to make it free at that point. If it's loose all the way along, the instruction manual will show you how you can spread the strip underneath yeah, I think these are, to make it a tighter fit. I think these ones are automatic tracking. I can't see a tracking control. I think there was, oh there's a way of manually doing it, but I think they pretty much automatically track the tape. But yeah, that seems to be working alright. It probably could do with a little bit of grease on the tape guides. Oh, but look what condition, I didn't take much notice of that, but it's actually quite good. Yeah, it's been done at some stage, I'll say these two tracks that the tape guides go up and down here, the sort of openings where they slide off and it Paste to put a little bit of grease on there if they, if it's dried up because they, they can sometimes sort of jerk along a little bit as they go. Um, can't remember what really went wrong with these mechanisms. Not a lot. So I think these little half load arms used to break. Plastic on them. Occasionally, possibly due to a chewed tape or something, the mode switch down in there. They used to cause a bit of problem and you'd have to unsolder that, get it out and clean the contacts. And um, yeah, a lot of people didn't like these mechanisms because they're quite complex underneath due to the amount of gears in them. But it was very rare you'd have to actually do much with the gears in the G-Mech. But occasionally you'd get one where someone had forced a tape out of it and that could do damage or misalign things. Um, but yeah, a lot of, a lot of technicians did, wouldn't even touch these things because they're so complicated. I think the first one I fixed was a machine, something like this, one of the hi-fi ones and someone had forced the tape out of it and broken just about everything so by the time I got, got that one going I was an expert on it and never had a trouble with this mechanism since that time but yeah there's the mechanism underneath a lot of different gears in this chain here hidden under these plates and stuff the hi-fi one has this extra belt and these extra gears which I forget what even it, that is for So that's something to do with the reel. Yeah, I honestly can't remember what the hell that was for, but the normal deck is missing this, these gears and this extra belt just has the one belt. But I'm um, quite an easy mech to work on. I might do a separate video of that, but at least this recapping has worked so far and all seems to be running well. So I think we can call that machine repaired. Um, like I say, if you're doing it for a customer, a proper repair, or even for yourself, if you're going to use the machine can, a lot into the future, you'd just blanket change all the electrodes in the power supply 
and that's the best thing to do to go over any dry joints any joints that look iffy and that should keep the thing going um, I don't think I've ever had a regulator IC or anything fail on these ones it's normally just those capacitors so if you've replaced a lot of them high temperature ones and should should go for another 10 years or so on a new set of capacitors I would think um, yeah I think sometimes that, that little pulley used to wear out on these they do get the odd mechanical issues but um, nothing I ever had a capstan motor fail or anything like that in this mechanism um, about the worst you can do to them is people trying to get a tape getting stuck in there for some reason and people forcing it out and um, they can do all sorts of damage because it is quite a plastic mechanism the gears aren't particularly strong and this this loading mechanism here is quite a flimsy one but I'll have a, I might actually pull it a bit for old time's sake and have a bit of a look at some of the alignment and how to run through these decks in another bit another video but thanks for watching this one